Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening po sa lahat. Welcome po sa 158th episode of the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. Thank you for being part of our credible online community at sana po masiyahan po kayo at marami po kayo matutunan sa ating webinar for today. <clears throat> so there's an imperative po in terms of the need to establish dedicated cancer institutes or cancer medical centers sa Pilipinas. We draw inspirations from successful models all across the world. And today, we'll explore kung paano po itong mga cancer medical centers pong ito can okay, serve as beacons of hope of offering holistic care to patients and their families. We will try to understand po kung paano po yung ating unique healthcare context dito po sa Pilipinas and what is needed for us to have a blueprint that combines both this innovative proposal and compassion to new, to set new standards for cancer care. We'll also be delving into ano po ba yung mga pwede po nating magawa in terms of uh, engagement and dialogue with those who are um, policy makers, <clears throat> decision makers, and other stakeholders for us to be able to make sure that we have the necessary policy reforms, financial considerations, and logistical problems address when we are talking about setting up such a system in the Philippines. I'm Dr. Raymond Francis Sarmiento, Director of National Health Telehealth Center, National Institutes of Health, University of Philippines, Manila. Always a pleasure to be with all of you during our regular Friday and always looking forward to our Friday po because I get to share hosting duties with our adjunct research faculty at the National Telehealth Center, also internationally known public health communications expert, Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado. Dr. Susie. Hi, good afternoon, Raymond. And um, you can see there's a Department of Health seal here at my back. So mm. I just want everyone to know that I've joined the Department of Health as a special advisor for global health for the DOH, but I'm also running for um, regional director of WHO in the Western you Pacific region. So new things happening, and I'm back in Manila. So, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. We'd like to, um, I'd like to greet everyone who's watching and who has joined us on the Zoom. I'd also like to, to welcome everyone who's watching us on the playback. Um, we also have those who are live streaming on the TVUP YouTube channel, the UP System Facebook page, TVUP Facebook page, Stop COVID Deaths Facebook page, and dami. And of course, all those watching from TVUP Signal, TV channel, 101. This week on Stop COVID Deaths, we will celebrate the power of multidisciplinary teams in revolutionizing cancer care. Um, you know, I, I come from a family of, what should I say, Raymond? People have had cancer. So mm. uh, I have a brother who passed away from colon cancer, a sister who had breast cancer, and uh, very recently another brother who had leukemia. So this is very close to my heart and I'm really looking forward to hearing about how we can make uh, our care for cancer patients more holistic. So it's not just about chemotherapy, but total or complete care. As usual, we are bringing you the best speakers we can possibly get. Our main speakers, Dr. Jorge or George, Joey Ignacio, who is chair of the PGH Cancer Institute while our actor will be Maria Fatima or Gurley Garcia Lorenzo, who's been on the program before, co-founder of Kaith Foundation and the Philippine Alliance of Patient Organizations. And synthesis and closing with them by Dr. Uh, Dion Sakdalan, our PGH coordinator for training. All right, so as you've seen on our billboard, uh, we still call it Stop COVID Deaths, but we do cover all kinds of um, topics. And I know all of you are waiting for the latest news, both here and abroad. And it's for this reason that we bring you the news update. Thank you so much for our very first news update. Healthcare software and firmware, the risk have gone up by 59%, says the healthcare ISAC. So these researchers have found that vulnerabilities for the software and the firmware 
those that power medical devices like yung mga monitor po natin sa mga operating rooms sa mga ICUs and other health IT applications they have increased significantly nearly four times as many of as of these vulnerabilities are being weaponized compared to last year so ang uh, clamor po ng mga organizations and associations is to call for greater support for cyber terrorism citing these as the defending against um, these types of attacks like cyber attacks uh, is a critical public health and safety issue that should not be solely shouldered by private sector organizations given the impact on national security the health tech industry ne still needs work uh, still needs to work through creating sboms uh, and that's something that uh, if it's feasible there should be one team dedicated to scanning devices as a centralized function with a distributed model uh, hindi niyo po naitatanong doon po sa ating mga cyber terrorist mga hacks po natin no it ha and especially if it's targeted to healthcare organization it has resulted to an increase in the number of deaths dahil po may mga ganun pong attacks over to you dr susie thank you so much Raymond. um President Bongbong Marcos is open to having a partnership with the United States to strengthen the nursing industry of both countries following the heavy toll from the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, President Marcos was meeting with U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth in Malacanan on August 8th. And in his remarks, President said he does not see any problem regarding the proposal, but added that the Philippine government would have to study it first, especially since the country is facing its own shortage of nurses at home. We need to find new schemes so that the brain drain is not quite as severe as it is now, the president said. But he also um, admitted that we have no concrete plans yet and we do want to strengthen our ties with the United States on this matter. So I think this is um, good news that uh, at the level of the president, he's looking for some solutions for our nursing shortage. And that's our news. Uh, for today, we'll be back next week with more news on the news update. And we are back. Sorry. Glitches. We're hmm. back. Um, and I think we're going now to... Uh, usually, we, we start off with getting a uh, an opinion from on the topic. So we're talking about cancer and cancer care and how can we make this more holistic. And we would like uh, the Philippine General Hospital to share what it's doing in terms of a multidisciplinary approach. But before that, uh, Raymond's going to introduce the person on the street. I'm sorry. To set our discussion into context, let's, uh, we'll need to be able to understand what the people on the street already know about the topic. So this is why we have the person on the street video. This is a very, very short video coupled up by the TVUP team. So thank you, TVUP. Uh, some of the questions that we ask our interviewees for this week are as follows. May kakailala po ba kayong may cancer? Paano po siya ginagamot dito sa Pilipinas? Ano po ang kanyang mga karanasan sa pagpapagamot dito sa Pilipinas? At sila po ba ay satisfied sa kanilang mga naranasan po in terms of pagpapagamot ng kanilang sakit uh, dito? Please watch this. Yes po, meron po. Ovary cancer. Mm, actually, ako. I'm a living testimony. <laughs> Breast cancer stage to be. Meron po ang aking tiyahin sa parasite nagkaroon po siya ng breast cancer. Bali, nag-chemotherapy sila. Nag-stay sila sa hospital ng matagal then chemotherapy. And luckily, gumaling naman sila. Nung una kasi, parang ipinagaw niya yung sakit niya na yun. Not until na bumagsak siya, then doon na-discover na may cancer pala siya. Nag-undergun siya ng chemotherapy. But eventually, uh, namateric siya. Actually, nung una, pinatanggal namin itong left breast ko. So, tapos, siyempre, for recommendation ng chemotherapy, di ba? So, nagpa-chemotherapy ako ng mga twice. Pero, nung second chemo ko kasi, 
parang feel ko parang mawawala na ako. Eh, hindi pa ako pwedeng mawala, di ba? Kasi, three years old pa lang yung bunso ko during that time. Maliliit pa yung mga anak ko. Kaya, so, ang ginawa namin ni Javi, um, pinractice na rin namin yung faith namin kay Lord Jesus. Eh, nakiusap kami isang gabi na kung bubuhayin pa niya ako, bubuhayin pa niya ako kahit another 20 years. Pero kung hindi na, kunin na niya ako nung mga oras na yun. Pero, di ba, sa awa ng just eto ko ngayon, no? nakara sa camera yun. <laughs> yeah, satisfied sila kasi naging okay yung friend ko. Kung sa kaso ng tiyahin ko ay hindi dahil nauwi rin sa kamatayan ng kanyang sakit. So, hindi rin ganong nag nagapan ng chemotherapy. May, may nag-alok nga sa amin na pag uh, anuhan ako, eksperimentuhan ako. Eh, syempre, di ba, ayaw naman namin noon. Eh, imbes na umaba pang buhay ko, baka mamaya managay pa sa alangan. Kaya, ayun, yun lang masasabi ko. Hindi naman sa, hindi, hindi ako satisfied or what. Kaya lang, syempre, di ba, mas gusto ko pa rin na yung decisions ko is based on my kung saan ako komportable at kung saan sa tingin ko ako gagaling. Kaya so far, 13 years na akong survivor. Ganyan po, diba? Huwag kayong matakot magpagamot. Mas maganda kasi kung habang maaga pa, magagamot na kayo kasi may pag-asa naman. Huwag na nating antayin lumala yung sakit nyo. Bali, after noon nga, naisinuko na namin yung um, yung faith ko sa Lord Jesus. Pinractice namin yung faith namin. So, nag-herbal na lang ako. Ang ginawa namin yung naglalaga kami ng dahon ng guyaba no? makain ako ng mga fibrous fruits kasi yung dahon ng guyaba no? pag nilaga mo, yun yung ginagawa kong tubig kaso nakakonstipate naman siya so kailangan kong sabay ng mga fibrous fruits mga vegetables pang, mga ganon sana maagapan nila sa unang mga senyalis pa lang, o mga signs pa lang ng cancer ay may konsulta na nito sa mga eksperto sa doktor para magamot at gumaling sila sa mga katulad kung may cancer alam nyo yung cancer is mas magiging cancer siya pag inisip nyo ng inisip eh. Dapat kasi siya iwasan yung isipin ng isip. Mamuhay kayo ng normal. Lumaban kayo ng normal. Patas. O ba? Kasi yung cancer na yan ano, cancer nga ba? So destructive siya. Kaya yun, sinuko ko Lord Jesus. Pinractice namin kung ano yung faith, faith namin. ba? Tapos yung yun na, yung mga alternative herbal ano na, ano ko diet ko. Yun lang. Okay, thank you so much, TVUP. Very, very, very important po, no? That it's really about, well, especially for that patient po, uh, cancer patient, the mindset that goes into the preparation po, especially when they have to receive treatment. Ano pa yung mga ginawa po niyang adjunct, like uh, getting, uh, like taking herbal medicine, etc., and those that have undergone uh, treatment yung mga kamag-anak po nila. Okay. Dr. Susie? Raymond, I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm lip-reading you. Ah, you're lip-reading me. <laughs> um, I'm think, I think I'll log out and then log back. I'm lip-reading you literally. So sure, sure, continue. sure. Log, log back out. out and then log, log back on. Yeah, because I can't hear a thing. But I did see the person on the street earlier and would like to thank. Uh, TVUP for that. Um, and you're in Raymond's hands muna. Log out muna ako ha. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Susie. Uh, so before we proceed to our webinar proper, as mentioned, we will be having, and as in previous uh, episodes, but we'll be having a standard panel discussion format. And after our speakers have presented, that will be followed by a Q&A session. So if you have any questions that you want to ask already, even if we haven't started, <clears throat> please feel free to put them in the Q&A box of Zoom. Or if you are in YouTube or in Facebook, put them in the comment section. Before we proceed also, we want to announce that we have sent out all of the certificates of attendance for webinars 1 to 157, including yung pong tinatanong po ninyo, the certificate of attendance for the climate change, yung rising sea levels po natin na, na episode. That has already been, yung mga certificates po doon, all have been sent out already. And those who have watched at least 50% of the webinar duration, yun po ang makakatanggap ng certificates of attendance. Okay? So if you feel that you should have received but did not, please feel free to email us at stowcovidets at up.edu.ph. Before we delve into the webinar, we know everyone is very excited. So here, here it is, our cute intro video, very, very short for our fun quiz segment for today. Hello? 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 
Kumusta na kayo lahat? Hi, I'm Doc Trusi, the Mini Doc Susie. And I'm Doc Radar, the Mini Doc Raymond. Are, Are you ready, ready to have, have fun? fun? Simply open your browser to www.slido.com and enter your code to participate. We will discuss your answers during the panel discussion later on in the program. We will have it flashing on your screen in a bit and we look forward to your answers. Masaya at madali lang ito. Join na! Okay, as Dr. Susie would say, very, very, very funny just, just seeing those animations. But, but thank you so much, uh, TVUP, for making sure that we're engaged. Uh, can we have on the screen, both in the Zoom and in Slido, yung ating pong two questions for today's fun quiz? For today, we will have two questions. And for those who are joining us outside of the Zoom, you can still participate in our fun quiz by uh, putting in sa ating browsers po, no? <clears throat> doon po sa address bar, typing in slido.com. And when you are prompted, you enter the code 6510096. That's 6510096 for you to be able to participate in our fun quiz. For our very first question, <clears throat> and this is what we do naman po, no? we read the questions, and then towards the end of the presentation, we have our experts answer the question specifically. Very first question that we have, when... Should you seek consultation with an oncologist? Is it A, when you have unexplained weight loss? Is it B, when you have fever with loss of appetite? Letter C, loose bowel movement. Yung pong medyo, uh, medyo matubig-tubig. Yung ating pong uh, uh, bowel movement. Or letter D po, blaring of vision. So alin po doon, you think, should be um, uh, well a red flag or a warning sign in terms of uh, what gets into um uh, ano po ba yung kailangan mapakonsulta na po tayo sa oncologist okay so just put in your answers and we'll we'll try to track them down kung may mga nag uh, yan po facebook or youtube dito po kayo sa slido.com lalabas po we'd like to greet those who are joining us all the way from Cagayan Valley Medical Center in Peña Blanca, Cagayan, in Pototan, in Iloilo, Igan City Health Office in Lanao del Norte, from Deca Homes Loma de Gato, Marilao, Bulacan, maraming salamat po. From the Malay Municipal Health Office, thank you so much. Dr. Jose Fabella Memorial Hospital, maraming maraming salamat po. Philippine Heart Center, University of Rizal System Health Services Unit, thank you so much. From UP Los Banos, from the Philippine General Hospital, thank you din po. Those joining us from Cagayan de Oro City, maraming maraming salamat. From Bataan, all the way from Bataan, thank you so much. Uh, and then we'll move on to our second question. For our second question, it reads, second question po natin, um, what are the new practices or modalities in cancer care? Is it A, immunotherapy, B, Precision medicine or tailored chemotherapy, gene therapy. Letter C, minimally invasive surgery. Letter D, <clears throat> precision radiotherapy or E, all of the above. Obviously, there are those who are joining us po, uh, internationally from the Chonin Hospital, Taipei City in Taiwan. University of the Philippines Nursing Alumni Association, International Incorporated, Edison, New Jersey, from Los Angeles uh, in California, from Penang, Malaysia, from Canadian Medical Center in Damam, Saudi Arabia, in Ha'il, Saudi Arabia. And then pahabol po from La Consolacion University in Malolos City, Bulacan. So please uh, participate po dito po sa ating fan quiz as we move on to our webinar proper. Dr. Susie. Dr. Susie. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me, Raymond? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Okay, so I just needed to log out. Okay, so as as we have stated, we are we are always trying to get the best uh, speakers for you, and we are honored and privileged to have with us the chair of the Philippine General Hospital Cancer Institute, Dr. Jorge or Joey Ignacio. Joey, welcome to the webinar. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Dr. Raymond. Raymond. Thank you, thank Dr. Susi, for having me here. It's a privilege actually to be here. And uh, good day to all our uh, viewers from all over. Thank you so much, Dr. 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 Joey. Um, my coming Please interest. go ahead, sir, with your, uh, with your presentation. Okay, um, okay um, allow me to share this screen. Share this screen. Sige, go ahead. Okay. Okay. 
Now, we're talking about uh, holistic uh, approach, uh, approach in cancer, in cancer care. care. Um, so you, have uh, ano slide, you have to go to slideshow. You have to go to slideshow. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, um, this one. This one. Produce, produce, this, this, this. Uh, uh, are you coming in better? Coming in better? Yeah, you like you need to put your you need to put your um it's the headset. The headset. Oh, yeah, put okay. it on slideshow. Okay. Click on slideshow. Okay. okay. Uh, we're uh, talking we're about holistic right, right, right now. now and so this is how, this is how... Joey go to slideshow. Uh -huh. okay. Sa taas, uh, sa taas. This is our, our outline for today. Introduction of the about about uh, multidisciplinary scheme approach. approach. Uh, uh, international local, local practice, practice and the quality of life. So this multidisciplinary care is an integrated approach in healthcare, which uh, um, actually. Medical and allied healthcare professionals are considered uh, all are relevant in the treatment on, or options and collaboratively develop an individual. Sir Joey, sorry, uh, before we proceed, can you go to slide show lang, sir? Kasi naka, ano yung po kayo. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, sir. Go ahead, po. Yan po. Sige, sir. Click on slideshow. that better? Yes. Okay. Got Thank it. you, sir. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was so excited to start. <laughs> so, Go ahead, sir. Okay, po. Okay. So this will be our outline today. And there's a brief introduction. We'll talk about multidisciplinary care. As I said, it's it's an integrated approach. Lahat ng uh, relevant uh, treatment modalities will be taken into consideration. All disciplines that are involved with uh, cancer care are put in together. All relevant health professionals discussing all the options and putting all the best practices for patients and making a, a one definite plan for our patients. So what will be the benefit? Ano bang benefit ng multidisciplinary care for patients? Of course, we improve the planning in the consideration of full therapeutic range, survival benefit for cancer patients. Uh, those are the um, uh, literatures that actually uh, support all these things. Increasing recruitment of patients into clinical trials. Of course, we know that uh, uh, PGH being uh, we are giving both service and they have research and training, recognizing the emotional needs of patients also. Um, and we uh, more or less make a comprehensive plan so we don't duplicate all the, serv the uh, some of the services, improving the coordinations of services and development of, and responsibility between members of the multidisciplinary team. Now, for the professionals, of course, there will be reduction in minor in minor uh, psychological morbidity of the team members, learning and educated opportunities for all the team members, improving communication, sharing decisions, and understanding and adherence to a great treatment care plan. That is very important para map, map, map out ng patient rin and the nurses where patients would next go to. Uh, etc. So all the other plans that will be put in in their treatment. So what, these are the current uh, evidences for the multidisciplinary team care approach. Uh, it lowers the hazard ratio of death among MDP participants with S, uh, stage 3 and stage 4 non-small cell lung cancer. This was actually published by Chen Chao Plan, uh, uh, Pan and, and company. There's also improved staging accuracy. Of course, the staging is very important to, to make a very uniform uh, management for patients. 
in different stages, uh, increase, increase adherence to clinical practice guidelines to be more cost effective, and it will foster more uh, a better communication between all the other services, culminating in an improved value and clinician and patient satisfaction. Yung ariyan yung kasama sa ating uh, mga tanong sa ating mga lay, um, how can we improve or better serve them and how they can be more satisfied in the way we serve them. Reducing the rates of local recurrence, of course, uh, in the MDT, increasing likelihood of pathologic, uh, increasing the likelihood of pathologic complete response and sphincter preserving surgery in this uh, rectal cancer patients. It also lowered the rates of acute treatment toxicities. So all these things to be shown here by Zrinka uh, and colleagues. Now, of course, the multidisciplinary team approach working on breast cancer patients must um, mobilize makakuha ng recruitment. Of course, then there are, there's a uh, reduction in the mortality of these patients, 18% reduction. That is actually very significant when you compare an MDC compared to a non-MDC approach. Okay, so this is... Uh, about 65% of the respondents from Eastern Europe, 60% from Western, and 35% from Asia, and 25% from South America declared that MDT was a mandatory, mandatory part of the breast cancer care in their country. So we strongly advocate those who are, are starting their cancer centers to use the multidisciplinary team approach. So now we'll look at this. In the global scale, scale, say the most of these uh, treatments, uh, if not all can cancer, would be standard. Uh, includes the medical and surgical fields, but supportive services also comes in, like the nursing, pharmacology, dietary, and other services, ancillary, rehab med, including dentists, even are all included here. So there are courses that are offered. Often the American Society of Clinical Oncology offers those courses. Uh, as well as ESMO also espouses the multidisciplinary team approach in their care. So how is it? How is it uh, doing in the Cancer uh, Institute in PGH? It is actually, uh, I apologize for the blurred uh, slide, but this is actually just a, it's a graphical presentation of what uh, we, uh, we saw in 2021, there's a census in 2021, bulk of the patients are breast cancers followed by colorectal cancers then there are uterine cancers uh, then there are uh, these are the uh, thyroid cancers and lung cancers followed so we have a uh, multitude of different types of cancers uh, seen in the cancer institute now uh, let's start with diagnostic services in pgh um, Hindi kasi nung makakatakbo talaga ang cancer unless the pathologist tells us 100% in dealing with cancer. And that this is very, very important. And that's why uh, with the advancement uh, in treatment comes also the advancements in diagnostics. And now we are looking at the genes. So that's why um, uh, chromosomal analysis, karyotyping, uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization or fish, um, kasama na lahat ito and everything that we do in pathology and tumor markers, cell block cytology, routine biopsy, close and sections, uh, even the endoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, colonoscopy, these are all standard. Radioimmunoassay uh, also done in PGH. Okay. Imaging, of course, uh, we know the regular x rays, uh, CT scan, digital sono sonogram, digital mammogram. We have both a portable uh, mammogram and a fixed. And we, all, all, as you know, we have a mobile mammogram that goes to different places in the, in the at least in, in Luzon. We have MRI and PET CT scan right now. It's no longer processing. So we did this uh, two months ago, but now the, the PET CT scan is about to be uh, operational. Uh, probably in one month or two months. Interventional radiology, we have fluoroscopy, image-guided uh, biopsy with ultrasound, CT scan, and MRI. Uh, all these things that we are 
doing in PGH just to be able to diagnose cancer early um, and, and, and any other stage there, um, there is. So imaging, radioisotope laboratory, we have spec gamma camera, we have spec CP gamma camera, we have bone densi densitometry also. In terms of service and treatment, of course, uh, we have the still the chemotherapy, the intravenous chemotherapy, I push, we have intrathecal chemotherapy, subcutaneous, and we also have the hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy or the high pec Actually, uh, the, I think PGH is the one who pioneered this one in the country. Um, as of 2021, these are the number of patients we were able to serve for just chemotherapy. This is for the radiotherapy. On the other hand, we have LENAC. We have, uh, right now we have two functioning LENAC and we're about to put in two more machines in the next years. So we have a high dose bracket therapy, also intraoperative radiotherapy which is actually the only one in uh, in only one in all the other uh, government hospitals we have an intraoperative radiotherapy so they can do radiotherapy right there and then in the operating room we have SRS SBRT these are capable tomotherapy um, machines in uh, in the works so we will take all of this uh, and bring it to PGH uh, in the next uh, years in, in our plan that I will talk about later on. Uh, we have taste the transarterial chemoembolization with sclerotherapy. We have pre-operative endovascular embolization, tumor ablation, intraarterial chemotherapy, and pleural disease. I'm just uh, telling you all these things because these are the things that we do in PGH. Uh, this one, I would like to highlight only the Da Vinci machine, which is our robotic, which is the only one in all the other government hospitals. Uh, we're the first to have a robotic surgery. Of course, we have the medical social services to help us with uh, our patients' uh, treatment. The DOH, of course, has the medical access uh, program. We have the Malasakit Center, and we we'll also have partner foundations like the PJH Medical Foundation, Sagip, the Child, and the Andres Soriano uh, Foundation. Now, let me go to the gist. So I, I told you about all those services that we, we, we do here in PGH, but let's see how this all fit in in what we call the multidisciplinary care approach. We have, uh, actually, these are the multidisciplinary um, teams that are actually Right now, uh, functional, we have a colorectal cancer weekly, gynecologic oncology, we have hepatobiliary cancers, uh, head and neck uh, conferences, bone soft tissue sarcomas, uh, lung cancer, neuro oncology, pediatric oncology, surgery, retinoblastoma, uh, supportive hospice and palliative care monthly, and lymphoma that will resume uh, this September collab uh, on collaborate. With inter-hospital, uh, we have PSMO monthly. We have St. Jude Hospital, which is actually from the U.S. Um, we have Global Neuroblastoma Network, Leukemia, Lymphoma, Hourly, and the St. Jude Nutrition. So not only locally, we also have inter-hospital and international um, ties. So these are, uh, uh, we are working on right now, we are, going to improve on our breast cancer multidisciplinary team and also the one neurology uh, multidisciplinary team. So we have to see how much more we can improve on, on these things. So we like to, uh, because we have seen that uh, those who are outside the, the multidisciplinary team had increased mortality, increased recurrence rates, uh, less cost-effective care, all these things, more acute chronic uh, treatment toxicities, less adherence of treatment and less patient satisfaction. So we would like to improve on all these things and we would like to, to make, make sure that we improve on all this. And so we start with our hospital registry um, here actually under Dr. Sitchanko is taking care of that one. Now the medical oncology also the med check, 
pediatric hematology oncology has the St. Jude care and surgery had the integrated surgical uh, information system. Orthopedic has their sarcoma census and otorhino. Laryngology also have their own registry. We just have to integrate everything else. Now, what is interesting right now is what is happening with uh, under the guidance of Dr. Jerry Castillo, we have the quality of life clinic. What is this quality of life clinic? Uh, this is a patient-centered approach in management. Patients are asked to fill out lo uh, a locally validated questionnaire on the quality of life uh, with scores. And there are red flags and patients are given the opportunity to ask their questions and concerns in their management uh, within the uh, quality of life clinic. So well, just for this one, this is quite uh, a heavy uh, picture, but it's just uh, one page of those uh, quality of life questionnaire. Uh, so we, we look at this, we, we ask the uh, patient to rate how they feel for physical well-being, uh, social family well-being, also the emotional well-being and functional well-being of patients. And they get to score them and they will we tally them and then we look for patients who are having problems and all these things. So they'll be able, we'll be able to address them. And this is, uh, it's both in English and the vernacular in Tagalog. So, meron ding ganito, no? So, pagalingan pangdamdamin for the emotional uh, part, malungkot ako, then they have to to score how, how yung lungkot uh, is affecting them. Contento ba ako sa kung papaano ko kinakaya ang aking sakit, etc. So all these things, there were all these questionnaires, patients are able to score them. So hindi kailanman, kaunti lang, medyo, medyo marami, lubos na marami. So patients are able to to express how much uh, yung kanilang emotional uh, burdens. And that is what we address in this quality of life clinic. It is actually something uh, unique in our center. Well, now, aside from all that one, of course, we need the support groups that these patients also have their support groups. The pediatric has their PGO cancer warriors, the PGS cancer support groups of the uh, gynecologic patients. And how do they fare and how they be able to, to continue on or support uh, the medicines that all these uh, uh, laboratories and diagnostics that they need. We have the DOH Cancer Medicine Access Program. We have PGH Medical Social Services who actually look for a way, looking for different uh, source, sources of funds. Government official funds, of course, are in there still. We have the PGH Medical Foundation to help us and the Soriano Foundation. We also have pharmaceutical support uh, and private donors. On the spiritual side, of course, we can uh, discount that there's a the spiritual component of patients. We have also have the PGH chaplaincy. We have to put back, uh, uh, honestly, uh, na we, we were uh, sidetracked by the pandemic. The, we have to put back the regular weekly uh, Friday mass that we have here in the Cancer Institute. And pastors from other denominations, we have volunteers that actually have regular uh, visits with our patients. Uh, in physical well-being, we used to have our Tai Chi exercises and Zumba, but uh, well, a while ago, I had my, I, I sampled the massage therapy because I wasn't feeling well. I had the back massage. We have this regular massage therapy every Friday. We are free, patients are free to come. Even uh, we also offer this also to our personnel who wants to have a massage here in the Cancer Institute. So the other ancillary therapies, which were actually in, the music therapy and art therapy also were, was halted by the pandemic. We're still going to, to bring them back. But we still have the play therapy. As you know, we have our, our own uh, playground within the Cancer Institute and the healing garden. And the other services that we still can uh, offer here, we have genetic counseling, ostomy care, dietary counseling, the pain clinic, 
grooming and counseling. Um, we have this uh, actually volunteers from David Salon who came in and help us out with grooming uh, uh, tips for our patients. We of course have the mobile cancer screening van as our part of our services as uh, we have observed for a long time already that um, in terms of coming for mammography for those screening that we uh, we can offer, um, most of the women actually do not really come for, for screening. Uh, most of them will only come for consult when they have something, they already feel that there's something wrong with their, with their breast. So we decided to to go to the patients uh, in the barangay. So we, we have our mobile cancer screening van, the maiden one pre-pandemic, we went to Ternate Cavite and the Western statistics for, for catch for mammography is like uh, one for every 100 mammography. But uh, in our maiden uh, screening uh, session activity, we had already, uh, we picked up seven cases already. So it's quite a success. So we'd like to to bring it back again. We're, we're trying to revive the, the mobile screening uh, session because uh, aside from the, all the, the mammography and ultrasound is in, inside, we can do biopsy in that site. In the site, we, we, we bring in also the, the surgical oncology fellows to, to help us out. And there are also um, uh, cancer screening lectures ongoing while the patients are waiting for their turn to be seen in our uh, scan cancer screening van. And of course, uh, other services, we have the field health support within the Cancer Institute. Yeah. So all these things para maging one-stop shop um, Cancer Institute. So what are we doing? We're trying to, to to look at all the patient's problem uh, in their perspective and trying to address all their problems. If uh, we, would, we would like to, to honestly uh, tell you that uh, we need, what we really need is a, a full office of navigator nurses. Uh, that's what we really need. Um, unfortunately, um, navigator nurse item does not really exist. In, in any government hospital, we really have to request that one to be uh, institutionalized already because these uh, nurse navigators are very, very important uh, in the success of a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary team approach because they're the ones who will help the patient go through or navigate, as, as we would say, be redundancy on that one, uh, through their, their their course in the fit of course of treatment within the cancer institute. So we'd like to do that. And of course, what do we have? We we would like to have in our Philippine General Hospital because we are seeing too much too too many patients actually too many patients in the cancer institute. And we really need space. We are quite crowded already. We need uh, more beds. We always had we always ask had to ask more capacity for linear accelerator, more, more capacity for, for the chemotherapy. Everything is more, more, more. So we are, uh, as you have probably heard, we are looking for to construct a PGH cancer center would be a 300 bed building for cancer patients, probably 150 charity, 150 um, private. It depends on how we'll be able to to work it out, uh, all services will be housed in a six billion peso public pri private partnership project. Surgical, medical, radiologic, other uh, services will be in a one stop shop building, at par with other cancer centers around the world. Of course, so we'd like to see the MD Anderson and everything uh, here in the Park View. Uh, we'd like to, to at least be at par with them and show them that uh, PGH or the Philippines is capable of making um, a cancer center uh, equipped with all the uh, updated uh, equipments and also with a multidisciplinary team that can actually handle 
or even the um, uh, rarest of cancers, the most complicated of cancers, so we'll be able to take care of all these patients. So this is the architect's perspective of, of what we are going to do in our, to make in our center is uh, situated in our 3,000 uh, square meter um, space here at the back of the Cancer Institute. So hope for all your support in here, this one. We'd like to, to see this um, dream to fruition. We are actually right now into, uh, close to, I think, bidding all this um, for our private partners. Now, the adage uh, thing is the question is, when do you really seek for consultation? What are the telltale signs that uh, you probably have cancer? Well, have changes in bowel habits, of course, in our bladder habits, uh, sore that does not heal. This is actually uh, an old uh, nomenclature. It's actually the unusual bleeding or discharge thickening or lump in the breast or elsewhere, indigestion, difficulty swallowing, yeah. obvious changes in warts or molds, nagging cap or persistent hoarseness, and of course the unexplained weight loss, I think, see here, pernicious anemia, anemia uh, unexplained also. So we, actually what is uh, very glaring here that uh, probably is uh, most important thing is when you have unexplained weight loss, that is actually something. Uh, alam nyo naman yan. Uh, when you look at this this Filipino uh, cliche of uh, greeting each other is like, oh, you you put on weight. No? Parang, oh, ganda mo naman. Ang ganda ng katawan mo ngayon. Medyo mataba ka ngayon. Parang nowadays, parang pangit pakinggan. Pero rather than hearing that parang bumabagsak ang katawan mo, parang you're, you're losing weight. So... These are the things that are to tell you there's something wrong or there's something happening in, in your body. You probably need to consult already. So um, I think I, 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 I covered most of the things that we are doing here in the Cancer Institute. But most especially is uh, we'd like to address um, cancer from the perspective of a patient rather than the doctors just deciding for all, all the things that we are going to do for the patient. We always I have to to see that our patients get to be satisfied um, whatever outcome we have. Um, as, I, as you see, uh, when we deal with cancer, either our patients really survive the cancer or patients actually succumb to the cancer uh, or whatever outcome there will be, we'd like to make sure that they are all satisfied with what we are doing for them. So I think that is the the gist of my lecture and would like to thank I'd like to thank you for listening. Oh thank you so much uh, for that very uh, informative presentation, uh, Dr. Joey and um, I'm sure you will see the appreciation of our audience with the emoticons in the chat box and we'll have more discussions in a moment. So um, Raymond, uh, over to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Ignacio. Ignacio. Thank you thank for, for make, making, making sure, sure that, that we, we learn more, more about, about the plan PPP for, I know, for the PGH Cancer Center. Marami po nakaabang dyan and we hope that comes to fruition very, very soon, sir. Um, so thank you, Dr. Susie, for our reactor po. You, we've had her before, but before I introduce her, I just wanted to make sure that everyone has had a chance to input their questions if they have already in the Q&A box. We will be selecting the top questions naman po. There are those who are starting to send in their private messages that we could, be, we could ask our speakers po. And hopefully those will be pre, um, chosen for our Q&A se session later on. For our reactor, we've already had her before. Uh, you know her as the co-founder for the Philippine Alliance of uh, Patient Organizations, but she's also the co-founder for Kaith Foundation and also a fellow of Ashoka. Please welcome again to your screens, Maria Fatima, si Ma'am Gurley Garcia Lorenzo. Po. Go ahead, Ma'am. Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me well? Yes, well, okay, yeah, naman. Well, yes. So, hi, Doc Raymond. Hi, Doc Susie. Hi, Doc Joey. 
Hello to Milet. I classmate ko yung wife niya eh, si Milet sa high school. So reaction lang. So thank you, Doc Joey, for your uh, very uh, informative uh, discussion regarding mostly on multidisciplinary care approach. So, kaming mga pasyente, gustong gusto namin yan, di ba? Siyempre, um, however, ang nakita ko ay medyo when we talk about multidisciplinary care approach, nakita ko puro clinical, di ba? Kunyari yung team uh, ang, ang nakalista. So, hopefully, uh, I think we, we, we are advocating, hopefully, sana interdisciplinary where we have social workers also in the team and then uh, we also have um, psychologists and for children child life specialists and even pastors diba kasi we want holistic care so i saw in your presentation na nandun sila pero parang separate sila hindi sila really part of the team i don't know correct me if i'm wrong later yeah so that's my first reaction and then second is, you know, uh, as patients, we advocate really for shared decision-making process. So we want sana na when you disclose the, 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 the fact that uh, we have cancer, na sana po ay nandun din yung aming family member, diba? And then you talk to us in understandable language. And then, um, sana po, uh, you don't get angry with us when we do not understand diba, medical terms such as retinoblastoma, osteosarcoma, and especially in the point of disclosure. Um, you have to understand that at that point, at that point, we're psychologically and mentally shocked, really, because of the news that we have cancer. So do not talk to us here mentally diba na you start downgrading downloading all the information when we are still here in the emotional level of trying to process the word palang na sorry mommy sorry daddy ganyan na merong ho kayong cancer so parang bum diba parang shock so allow it diba to to linger muna and then yon. So I guess it's really communication, the proper way of communicating with us patients. Now, you mentioned about your access to finances and I saw you have a malasakit center. Ang advocacy po ng PAPO ay sana po yung form na finifill upon ng mga pasyente for PhilHealth, DSWD, PCSO, ay sana po iisa na lang. Iisang form na lang. Kasi po, ang hirap po ng pabalik-balik kami, pabalik-balik na ang daming forms na pinifill upon. And meron pang proof of life na dapat nakikita talaga yung pasyente nandun. So, I hope in the new cancer center or in the cancer center in PGHU, somehow streamline the process because it really adds stress and anxiety to the patients. And I like the fact that uh, PGH has a quality of life clinic. Uh, that's new to me. It's the first time I heard about it. And I understand that you have a survey. My question is, what do you do with the survey? What, and is there a person who helps the patient who is not very educated fill up the survey? Diba? Yung po yung... Uh, yung, yun yung pumasok sa isip ko. And I'm thankful that you have support groups in PGH, but hindi ko nakita na may kite ang PGH. So, sana po ay magkaroon ng kite sa PGH, especially for children, yung child life services. Uh, it's already in the law, in the NICA law, that any center that has, uh, who is uh, treating children with cancer should... Uh, as much as possible, provide supportive care, child life services, so that you can prepare the child for medical procedures, educate them about the illness, tend to the emotional well-being, and assistance, especially during invasive procedures. Para po, less stress sa medical team, less stress sa patient, less stress sa magulang, 
di ba? Kasi po kung inaalala yan, binibigyan ng distraction techniques ang bata, the medical procedure will go smoothly. And then, of course, lend financial support and support parental and family um, uh, program. So, doon po sa aming mga partner hospitals sa Kite, meron po kami mga parent empowerment programs. Meron po kami tinataw na gabay magulang. And we, have, we really have coffee, coffee with our parents and we discuss para ano ba yung mga issues na they are undergoing and then we invite the medical doctors or the nurses or the social service kung ano yung mga problema nila para matugunan yung mga problema ng mga parents, ng mga bata. And then, um, since it's a one-stop shop that we envision for a cancer center, I sana po, um, I, I did not see it or maybe I missed it, sana po ay may rehabilitation services rin po yung mga cancer patient, especially for the osteosarcoma. Kasi po yung isa namin pasyente, kailangan pa namin talagang nun na naputulan ng paa. We have to look talaga everywhere for a, an NGO to help with the prosthesis, with the wheelchair, with the uh, crutches. So sana po, one-stop shop po talaga. And I also did not hear a survivor program. Um, we all want... Diba? At the end of the day, na sana po talagang may survivors ang ating mga cancer patients. So sana po ay magkaroon din tayo ng survivor program because caring for our patient doesn't stop once they have been cured with cancer. It's a lifelong process. Tibo pa. And then I'm glad that uh, Dr. Joey mentioned about the need for patient navigation. But the, the concept of patient navigation is not just for the medicine, I hope, but also to provide yung, at least, I think there are three types. The ba yung may physical patient navigator, yung ituturo sa mga pasyente, o oh, nanay, nandito po yung pharmacy, nanay, andito po yung ano, surgery, ganyan, yun yung physical. Meron yung psychosocial na patient navigation, yung talagang um, inaalam. Diba? Kung ano pa yung kailangan nilang, uh, ano yung iniisip nila para, what is the bottom line? Compliance to treatment. Because if you treat the patient, not just the body, but the mind, spirit, emotion, diba? social, yun, you will have better compliance to medical procedures. And then, um, we are also advocating na sana po, in place na yung electronic records ng ating mga pasyente sa ating super cancer center. Kasi po, when you refer back the patients to the community, sana po nandun na na talaga hindi na niya kailangan pang, di ba, uh, i-relieve or i-dalhin yung ganyang mga records niya na papakita sa mga community level, level 1, level 2 ng mga hospital, wherever they will be. Kung ano yung kanilang history, kung ano, what, have, what do they have to go through, etc. So, sana po, yun. Yun yung parang wish, di ba? Nag-wish lang naman tayo dito, di ba? Parang, ayun. And then, another one na sana po, ay in terms of governance, sana po ay may patient leader or patient advocate na nakaupo sa multi-sectoral governance council ng cancer center or board para po yung boses ng pasyente ay naririnig po ng na mga policy making uh, bodies ng cancer center. At syempre, we're glad na at least kami ay nakaupo sa NICA, yung technical working group ng NICA. So, salamat po. E sana po, maski sa hospital level, nandun po ang boses ng pasyente sa governance level. And lastly, sana po magkaroon ng halfway house. Kasi po, that's a big problem. Yung mga galing sa probinsya na wala namang kamag-anak, di po ba dito sa Maynila, ay sana meron silang matitirhan. Para po, again, compliance. Hindi po mapuputol ang ating uh, gamutan because they are there. They don't need to go back and forth. By, eh, mahal-mahal na yun ng gasolina, mahal-mahal na yun ng transportation, eh, cost, and then pati yung pagkain, etc. They have to leave everything back home. So, sana po ay maisip din natin na sana malapit sa cancer center ay isang halfway house. Kung pwede, nandun yung pasyente 
to complete their treatment. So yun lang po, and I am looking forward to our uh, discussion. Thank you po. Thank you so much, Ma'am Gurley. Palakpakan naman po. Thank you, thank you po. And uh, you really cited very, very important items, uh, especially in conjunction po dun po sa presentation ni Dr. Joey. So we'll be requesting Dr. Joey and also Dr. Susie to open their videos. And in the meantime, uh, we'll be shifting po just a little, uh, very, very quickly lang po dun sa ating pub special public service announcement for today. Stay safe and stay well. Mga bata, magpasama na sa Bakuna Center. Thank you so much, TVUP, the COVID Communication Public Service Announcement. Just one of the many creative outputs of the Stop COVID Nets team to push for COVID-19 vaccination. So please share this video clip to all your social media accounts. Stay safe and stay well. Magpasama na po sa Bakuna Center. Okay, so we'll start the ball rolling with questions, Dr. Susie. Go ahead, ma'am. Baka she, she might be having um, technical difficulties po, no? but uh, we'll, we'll wait for Dr. Susie later on. One of the first questions that we receive, and we'll just, we'll just pick it up dito lang po sa ating um, Q&A box would be, uh, what about the psychosocial support? Not for the patients, but for the family members daw po of the cancer patient, Dr. Joey. Uh, true no kasama dapat yung family eh, no? kasi in, at the end of all this uh, uh, journey of the patient ang may iwanan sa atin yung family how they will be able to more or less yung katulad ng mga na interview kanina do sa video clip natin no? they're the ones to tell the tale of uh, how how was it how was the how was the treatment of the patient how uh how was the patient how did the patient uh was patient comfortable all the way totoo naman no kaya nga sabi ni 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 ma'am girly tama naman no i uh, would like to thank you also for pointing that out gusto namin talaga eh gusto namin no uh, the pastors the pastors to be together with us actually uh hindi lang yun yung mga uh, psychiatrists psychologists we used to have a uh, voluntary psychologist for our pediatric patients. They are the ones who take care of that one. They, they talk about uh, how the patients are able to cope with, uh, with the disease and, and everything. So that was pre-pandemic. So we have to, alam mo, marami talaga na wala the pandemic. So we, we have to put them back again. Um, well, we, we have halfway houses here. Kaya lang nasa labas ng PGH. Uh, we plan to have one pagka nagawa yung cancer center pero not yet. So we have Bahay Aruga, we have Bahay Silungan, we have Child House. Uh, they're all around PGH na ginagamit ng mga patients namin for halfway. Pero yun, um, they are more of the private uh, uh, halfway houses. But madali naman magpapasok uh, yung kay Mother Ricky, the, the Child House. Uh, with the uh, cooperation with uh, Mr. Hansi, uh, marami na mga natutulungan yon. Um, aside from that, we also have uh, the the rehab and the dentist uh, are all the part of the cancer center also. Uh, talagang inan namin yan. In fact, uh, last month they were the ones uh, who invited me into their in their conference. Um, yun ang isang advocate namin that they were. They will have their own place in the cancer center. Yun nga, tama yun. Tama yung pinoint out ni, ni Gurley na, oh, 
kailangan namin ng prosthesis, kailangan namin ng ganito. Tapos, ililipat pa pala para makakuha nila. No, we'll have the cancer, uh, we'll have them all in the cancer center para hindi na lalabas yung mga pasyente. Um, in terms of, uh, true, no? Yung, isa yun sa, ano, sinabi ko sa media, eh, na, pat hindi na lang gumawa ang government kasi ng isang agency, kapag kailangan mo ng financial tulong ng mga patients natin, sila na yung maghahanap kung saan. Hindi yung uh, kung saan-saan pupunta. Eh, no? uh, sige, mag-apply, kayo, mag-apply daw kayo. No? Na, nabalitaan namin sa isang pasyente, DSWD. Na, nabalitaan sa isang pasyente, PCSO. Nabalitaan sa ganang. Why don't they make a uh, one agency who can take care of this for the patient? Para isa lang ang pupuntahan ng mga pasyente, tapos sila na yung maghahanap para sa pasyente. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng mga palakasan in, in a way. Dahil doon sa kanya-kanyang punta eh. Kanya-kanyang punta. So, uh, minsan constituents lang yung tinutulungan. Ganun. There, there are those parts na ano. Pero kung malagay natin sa one agency yan ng government, then we'll be able to tell them more or less, uh, ah, iisa lang, iisa lang pala yung pwede natin puntahan. Tapos sila na yung magto-source kung saan, kung ano yung available for patients. That will be wonderful, no? Na simplify yung buhay ng mga pasyente na nangangailangan. Um, I hope na mangyari. Now, survivorship program, uh, through, very important. Uh, actually, nakita ko yung, ano, in Baylor, Texas, there's a, a good survivorship program. Uh, because uh, my sister-in-law is uh, also a breast cancer survivor. And uh, ang laking role kasi talaga ng mga navigator and nurses, they're the ones, isang office sila talaga doon eh. So they're the ones uh, telling the patient, the my sister-in-law, uh, you can join our yoga sessions this afternoon if you're free, etc. Oh, there's a lecture that will be given by a doctor like, like this. So all these things will be part of survivorship for patients to be able to assess you know, dietary counseling, things like that. All all these things are under the umbrella of the navigators. Para i uh, sila yung nag nagdadirect lang na para sila yung andun na uh, para nasa kanila kasi yung uh, mga schedules ng mga pasyente that they can go to. All these things true. Gustong gusto natin yan. I hope that we'll be able to finance all these things. Um, but I think um, volunteerism will be bet, uh, better ano yun, para ma, ma- maximize lang natin. And there are a lot of uh, uh, volunteers that uh, we can tap the, to be able to do to help us out with all these things na ano, nasa survivorship. Oh, ano po ba yung mga ano natin? Uh, yes, true yung mga Um, kailangan natin talaga um, yung mga nag, nag-fill up naman doon sa quality of life pa na namin. Nakatagalog naman, so pagka hindi nila maintindihan, nag, natutulungan naman ng mga nurse na nandun. So, what happens is, pagkatapos nang co-collate yung mga anong yan, tapos itinitignan yung mga scores, so yung may mga matataas, ah, yung hindi ko talaga, iba talaga yung pakiramdam nila na doon ko doon to maluwa talaga. nakikita yon and then inakausap yung patients on ano talaga yung problema they're able to 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 voice out what what they feel and ina-address nun uh, nung mga doctors nila doon so nandun yung iba-ibang special specialties din na nakaharap sila yung nag-address ng mga concerns ng mga pasyente ang madalas na ano diyan na 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 talagang babad sa mga questions ang dietary actually Kaya sila yung ano kasi ang daming questions on on the diet ng mga pasyente. So, yan, and all these things are considered the quality of life clinic. Kaya malaking bagay yung quality of life clinic. Yan. And Dr. Castillo is the one pioneering it here in Okay, uh, Dr. Susie, follow up. Okay. So, uh Joey, one of the one of the things that uh Of course, the yung, yung most important consideration is the cost of care. No? Kasi it's one thing to have one doctor. It's another thing to have a team. And um, I don't know how this works out in PGH. Does it cost more to have a multidisciplinary team? Or that's really the approach? It, it 
it should be the standard thing that uh, pag, uh, in a conference, all the, all the disciplines are in there, uh, they put in all their, ano, wala naman yun. So, yun ang magkagandaan sa PGH. It does not cost them anything. Uh, they get to be planned out by a whole team um, at, at, at no cost at all to them. So, yun ang ganda ng mga, this is the benefit of our charity patients na napakarami nilang doctors um, that I, uh, we can actually tell them that the, uh, yung, ang plano po ninyo na para sa inyo ay pinag-usapan sa konferensya at uh, ito po ang mga uh, input o mga uh, opinion ng lahat ng eksperto para sa inyo. So, at no cost at all for our charity patients. So, maganda na yung ano natin on that one. I I don't I think the problem is that if you are a private uh, patient and you ask for a multidisciplinary team uh, meeting, uh, I think there's an extra <laughs> charge for you yes. for this one. But uh, I would say it is all worth it if you call that multidisciplinary team because uh, all the experts get to exchange their views on on how the patient is managed. Iyon yung mahirap kung pupunta ka sa ibang bansa and makakakuha ka lang ng isang doktor, eh, hindi naman yung buong team uh, because that will be very, very costly on your, on your part. So most of our mga kababayan who goes to different uh, another country for their treatment will only get one doctor or two doctors probably the most, not a, a whole team. Atin kasi, for our charity patients, it does not cost them anything. Right. Okay. So that's that's um doesn't cost them because they're in PGH. How about in other hospitals in the Philippines? How does it work? Uh, I have no idea for other private hospitals. I think there's a fee when you call a multidisciplinary team meeting. Um. Ma'am Gurley, what would you know for other hospitals? What's your experience uh, bilang sa PAPO or sa KAIS? Opo, um, ang, ang nangyayari po doon, bawat specialista na member ng team, babayaran ng pasyente po. Ganon po yun. Kaya yun ho yung kaba namin. Na, ha? Meron na namang nakita na, ay, pulmo, ay, Tapos biglang, ay, meron sa stomach. Naku, papasok naman. Di ba kasi it's parang all specialists. They're all specialists and they're bringing in and bringing in. So parang as that happens, di ba, parang sana nga may package eh. Di ba, may package sana na ang PhilHealth or ano na, multidisciplinary na, nandyan na. Hindi na namin, hindi na kami kabakaba na dagdag ng dagdag, di ba? So, and that's what we're also asking na, Sana merong ling limit yung PF para makapaghanda ang mga pasyente because sometimes we get the bill and then wala pa doon yung PF. You go, you have to go to the clinic and talk to the secretary because there's a separate bill for the specialist. So you see the anxiety it gives the patient na we only prepared for this much but then there are add-ons. So it's really, I, I call it cancer is really an equalizer. Because even if you're very rich or lalo na yung poor, ma-wipe ma out ka. Ma-wipe ma out ka talaga. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have another question here, Raymond, about family support. Because apart from the fact that cancers seem to cluster in certain families, I was saying this earlier that I come from a, a family of cancer. Cancer, um, well, not everyone's survived. I have a brother who's older who didn't make it. Um, and that was in the United States. No? What do we have available for families when one member of the family gets cancer? I say, I'm concerned now. it might be that all the attention goes to the patient. And in fact, not enough, not enough attention goes to the patient, right? Right? But when, because of our understanding of certain types of cancer and how there might be familial predispositions, what do we have in terms of advising families to have early screening or um, take more preventive steps? 
Uh, okay. Um, ang ano lang natin dun sa families, no? kasi talagang in in our setting, hindi pa talaga siya parang program. Uh, wala pa yung ganun, parang program talaga for the family itself. It becomes more of uh, the, the attending physician's uh, responsibility to advise lalo na yung mga ganyan nga yung uh, for breast cancer tapos meron ng pattern in their family to advise them na oh meron kayong mukhang meron kayong genetic ano uh, na abnormality that is being passed on to to the next generations they probably have to ask them uh, but what, some word of caution you need a genetic counselor with this one <laughs> pagka ganon kasi uh, i remember um meron lang isang batang babae nakasama yung mother niya sa kayong auntie niya pareho may breast cancer yung isang auntie niya meron pang breast cancer and we just uh, talked about uh, nako gusto mo bang mag mag test question pa lang umiyak na yung bata so, so, what, what uh, kailan kailangan talaga we, we're not so prepared for those things na no, no. pero kailangan din talaga pag-aralan maigi how to approach the family and how then of course they you know sa tama nga rin yon na baka makakuha pa tayo ng baka makasave pa tayo ng lives if we'll be able to do so i think uh we need another program for that one and uh, honestly wala pa ako nakita any institution that has uh, a program for that one but uh, uh there there is actually uh, a new technology that's actually coming out um uh, probably in the next, in the future um uh, hindi pa masyadong institutional as and there's a circ circulating dna that can, you can take out in the blood of patients that can uh, actually early predict before the cancer comes out kung meron na talagang nare-release na dna uh, abnormal dna in the blood ng mga, mga ano ng ibang individuals so until then that we'll be able to to see provision on these things marami pa tayong makikita na program siguro na we can actually um, adapt na um, tama yun as uh, pointed out by Dr. Susi kailangan natin i-address talaga rin ang family also by by girly kailangan din talaga but we do uh, honestly wala pa tayong program talaga for that Raymond, are there more questions for you? Uh, a little, uh, more questions coming in po um, <clears throat> uh, from nurse po, Gerald Pinion. Common patient feedback uh, is the lack of time to provide information by the healthcare provider on the treatment plan of the patient. Marami daw pong mga tanong that, uh, that gets left unanswered. So they seek care outside of the multidisciplinary care approach. So ano po ba yung what's the approach to make sure that this doesn't become the norm I guess and uh, making sure that all of the concerns of the patient are addressed bago po sila umalis po nung clinic Dr. Joey That's very nice dapat uh, kasi yan no? so eto naman sinasabi ko sa when uh, I was lecturing sa mga students when you talk to patients, uh, there's a parting question, a question that you should always ask your patient is, do you have anything else to ask me, ask of me? Um, dapat, pero not all, honestly, not all specialists are comfortable with that question. Kasi alam mo naman, pag marami kang pasyente at tinanong mo yan, uh, haba na naman yung time mo yan. Uh, ano no tapos maraming mga katabing uh, relatives etc dumami na naman yung questions I was yun nga tap, well i i have to ask that one and then I'll always tell them if, if you don't have questions right now probably when because uh, sometimes it doesn't sink, sink in uh, agad sa mga ano sa mga pasyente or their relatives pag sinasabi ko the next time we meet uh, ipunin niyo yung questions niyo as much as i can answer them uh, i will answer them for you uh, i think that is uh, one pearl that I can give all the practitioners out there na kailangan kailangan nilang itanong doon sa pasyente. Sa parting, it actually brings in a message also that you really like to, you care for a patient. You'd like to, you like to listen to the patient also. 
in in all the ways that you can. Parang ganun ang dating sa kanila. Yeah, I have a question for girly. Girly, don't we have like public information, materials, videos, kind of self-help in Filipino or Cebuano? Ano ba tayong mga ganyan na pwede natin share sa audience natin? Um, Doc Suzy, ano yan eh, per center. Kunyari, kasi we have naman partner hospitals, partner pharma companies, mga ganyan. And then, we rely on them, di ba, to create. Kasi, syempre, that has mga, and of course, DOH. Talagang we rely on DOH a lot for the information. What we do, Doc Suzy, is when we have this information, lalo na from DOH, then we have webinars. And then we explain, we have discussions about it. Yon, yung parang pinalalalim namin yung mga materials na yon. Kasi minsan, di ba iba lang yung binabasa, tas minsan mali palang interpretation, mali palang hindi palang naiintindihan yung isang term, ganon. So that's what we do. So we have webinars, we have focus group discussions to deepen the understanding on these things about, especially about cancer. Di lang about for papo, it's not all about cancer. It's about scoliosis, about rare disease. Iba iba wu kasi yung mga patient groups under papo. Just a rejoiner to read the question kanina, Doc Raymond, yung about the seeking information, di ba? I just want to also highlight in the age of chat GPT and AI, the patients are really going to that, are really relying on chat GPT and all that for information. Ngayon, if the doctor doesn't spend time, di ba, to really explain, then that's where the disinformation, the miscommunication comes in. So I hope uh, that that is at the back of the mind of the doctors. Now, I hope you quote unquote waste time to explain. <laughs> Tanatawag kasi sometimes they call it why you are wasting time. No, it's not a waste of time because the more you make the patient understand, compliance increases. Yung pa. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you completely, girly. No, it's not. There's no time wasted when we're teaching. Eh? Kasi, and and that's a very important message I think for today that um. I think the whole multidisciplinary approach is really about uh, is about educating both the, the the patients and the doctors about what works best in terms of, of cancer. Okay, I think we are running out of time, Raymond. Unless you have one more question over there. Um, I think we should be okay unless uh, you, Doctor Joey, will be able to recommend now um, an institution that can offer. Financial grant for studies conducted on breast cancer, though, because someone is writing up their dissertation. Otherwise, okay, naman po. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, if, if you'd like, uh, on a if you're doing something on a research, of course, uh, we have uh BOST who can offer actually uh finances on that one financial uh grants. Um, of course, the uh, PCHRD under the BOST also, and of course, uh, some pharmaceuticals will be actually. Very happy to to help them out with that one. Uh, the PSM always quite limited, but if you have a very good uh, proposal, we can actually put them on. There's the Philippine Scientific Medical Oncology. I mean, uh, if you have a very good proposal, they can actually yeah, seriously take on on that one. Meron na silang fondo for some of these things. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, no more questions, uh, Dr. Susie. Oh, let's go to our ano, fun quiz. Okay. Can we have the questions po from our fun quiz be shown on the screen? Para lang po. Ayan, okay. Uh, how about for sa ating slide though? Okay. For our first question, Dr. Joey will rely on you. Ah, although you <laughs> mentioned this, we want just to reiterate po. When so, should uh, you uh, seek? I consultation congratulate with that uh, a lot of uh, our listeners. They're really listening. That's <laughs> true. Unexplained weight loss is the answer. No, Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, 90% were able to get 90%. the correct answer for Zoom and then 100% po dun sa slide. For question two, Sir Joey, what are the new practices or modalities in cancer care management? 
Now, of course, this will be all of the above. The immunotherapy, I was not able to elaborate on that one. This time, uh, hindi yung gamot ang pumapatay sa cancer, but it's your, your own immune system that we the medicine will teach to recognize your cancer and then kill it. So now we are talking about tailored or gene therapy. Now we, we're looking at the genes for us to help us out direct kung anong klase chemotherapy drug will be uh, offered for you that will be more uh, kumbaga precise sa treatment ng cancer. The most, of course, we have minimally invasive surgery for our own. The less, the less invasive surgery is the, the welcome talaga yan, robotics, and of course. And precision radiotherapy right now, we are looking at very precise uh, in, uh, radiotherapy treatment. Hindi na pinatamaan yung mga organs na hindi dapat tamaan. So all these things, yes, all of the above are the new modalities that we use for cancer. So the answer is all of the above. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so before we proceed po to our next section, we'll be going through our panel evaluation uh, na something that we ask everyone to answer po because we do not send out a separate panel evaluation poll po. It's five, question, five statements, four-point Likert scale. And while we're doing this, while we're reading this, we hope everyone not just participates, but we ask our speakers, Dr. Joey Ignacio and uh, Ms. Gurley Lorenzo, to come up with their final messages po to our speakers, something that they would want the audience to take away from this webinar. I'll just read the questions and then we'll move on to that uh, parting word segment. Po. For our first statement here, the panelists demonstrated total knowledge of the topic. Number two, the panelists were well prepared and organized. Number three, the panelists spoke clearly and audibly. Number four, the panelists used appropriate language with technical medical jargons adequately explained. And number five, finally, the panelists contributed to new perspectives and knowledge on managing various key health issues. We will not be closing this evaluation poll uh, sa dulo na po ng ating webinar po, no? uh, as we move on to the final or parting messages from our speakers. Dr. Susie. Yeah, okay. Let's start first with um, Gurley. What's your, what are your parting words for our listeners? Well, actually, I want to thank Doc Susie, Dr. Raymond for guesting me again. Salamat and you're listening to the patient's voice. And I hope the healthcare practitioners we have there, please continue listening to your patients, understanding them, because we want to be your partners in treatment care. Salamat po. Okay, thank you very much, um, Gurley. Let's go to Dr. Joey Ignacio. Joey, what are your parting words? Thank you to all listeners right now. Alam natin na walang may gusto na magkaroon ng cancer. Alam natin na ang cancer mabigat talaga dalitin. Pero makakagawa tayo ng paraan para ang pagdala ninyo sa inyong sakit ang pagpapagamot, lahat ng bagay, ay maging magaan para sa inyo. Makipag-ugnayan sa amin, sa mga doktor nyo, ng espesyalista, maagang magpakonsulta, lagi-lagi natin sinasabi. Pero, ang higit sa lahat, huwag tayong sumuko. Huwag tayong sumuko kapag nalaman natin na meron tayong sakit na cancer. Magagawa namin kayo ng paraan at mapapakibsa namin Hanggang anumang stage yan, may stage 1 yan, stage 4, meron pa rin tayong magagawa para maging maayos ang inyong buhay. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Joe Ignacio, the head of the uh, Cancer Center at the Philippine General Hospital. Thank you so much to both of you for your time, for the preparation, and for, what should I say, the thoughtful, the thoughtfulness that went into what you shared with us today. We have a summary that will now be shared by um, Dr. Dion Sakdalan. Good Dion, Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Dr. Susie. Dion. Good afternoon, Dr. Raymond, to our presenter and reactor and all our online viewers, old and new. So as always, we had a very uh, informative presentation and sharing of wishes, I would say, um, and plans in providing holistic care management for cancer patients. So big thanks to our distinguished guests. 
Um, so, Dr. Joey Ignacio, our one of our medical oncologists and the chair of our PGH Cancer Institute, uh, gave us like an uh, overview of what uh, PGH can offer for our cancer patients. So he, he started um, his presentation by defining what multidisciplinary care is. So he said that it's an integrated team approach to healthcare where medical and allied healthcare professionals consider all relevant treatment options, collaboratively developing an, in, an individualized treatment and care plan for each patient. So he listed the benefits of a multidisciplinary care, and he said it includes improving planning through consideration of all or full therapeutic range. It may improve survival, as he had um, listed the different studies where improvement in survival for lung, rectal, and breast cancer um, was um, illustrated or achieved. Multidisciplinary care also may increase recruitment of patients in clinical trials. It may, it may help recognize the emotional needs of the patients, and it becomes, it becomes possible that less service duplication and there will be better coordination of services. For the professionals handling the cancer patients, a multidisciplinary team approach may decrease the psychological morbidity to the team in managing the patient, it may develop or improve their team communication. It can offer better learning and education opportunities for the team members and may um, facilitate shared decision-making for the co-managing professionals. Now, um, Dr. Joey said that the multidisciplinary team approach is already recommended and practiced globally. Um, both local international specialty societies managing cancer patients recommend the multidisciplinary team approach, and it's already the standard of care in most cancer centers abroad. So Dr. Joe Ignacio showed us or uh, gave us a long list of services um, that the Cancer Institute of the Philippine General of, um, Hospital can offer our patients. So it includes a wide range of diagnostic services and treatment services. He mentioned that we have the expertise from both surgical and medical field that may provide high-tech treatments to include immunotherapy, minimal invasive surgery or robotic surgery, and even precision radiotherapy. Aside from the doctors, we also have very good um, array of paramedical staff you know, to help support the doctors in managing the patient. So there are medical social services, the rehabilitation services, the psychiatry, pain and palliative care services to address the different needs of the patients depending on the stage and whatever symptom that is bothering them. Aside from the paramedical services, Dr. Drew Ignacio also mentioned about the adjunct support um, units that may help uh, patients in terms of their needs to be able to manage their problems. So we have the Malasakit Center and all the foundations that support patients with um, cancer. We also are able to support in terms of religious or spiritual support, both from the PGH chaplain and from other uh, religious denominations. Dr. Ignacio also mentioned about activities to support physical well-being and other ancillary therapies that may include music, art, and play therapy. He said that this approach is being done through a regular hospital-wide multidisciplinary meetings of the four of, of different experts uh, to address the varied cancers that uh, PGH handle. Um, aside from the local expert, we are also able to tap um, international experts um, from abroad that um, provide their very valuable inputs in, um, in planning for and in managing our patients. Um, lastly, Dr. Joey Ignacio mentioned about this new uh, clinic that the PGH has, and this is the Quality of Life Clinic. This clinic um, focuses on patient-centered approach, and they do it by getting the quality of life status of patients through a survey form. And from this form, um, the doctors try to address the other needs um, that the patient um, has to be able to provide a more holistic care. He also mentioned about um, getting more nurse navigators who are important factors in the success of this kind of multidisciplinary treatment. 
This is by um, having them guide patients through their course of treatment and through their care management. Finally, towards the end, Dr. Ignacio mentioned about this uh, PGH Cancer Center, which is a bigger building that can accommodate a lot more diagnostic and therapeutic services and, of course, a lot more patients um, to be able to treat more patients uh, that, are, that come in into this hospital. And uh, the dream is that it will be a cancer center that is at par with other cancer centers abroad. Uh, for Dr. Ignacio, the final word um, towards the end of his presentation was that um, he feels like we need to address the cancer from the perspective of the patient and not just focus on what doctors need to do based on a diagnosis, but more of um, looking into what the patients need so that they will be more satisfied with the treatment that we provide. So in other words, Dr. Ignacio um, um, emphasize that we need to heal patients and not just the diagnosis itself. Um, our second presenter or our reactor was uh, Ma'am Maria Fatima Garcia Lorenzo or Ma'am Gurley. And uh, she's a co founder of uh, the Kai Foundation and a Shoka Fellow and a co founder also of the PAPO or the Philippine Alliance of Patient Organizations. So she clearly echoed what patients or cancer patients value. And these are not just multidisciplinary care, but interdisciplinary care where the social workers, the rehab doctors, and other members of the paramedical services are also involved in the discussion and actual care management. Two is shared decision-making where family and other caregivers are around during the disclosure of the, of the diagnosis and during the discussion of the treatment plan. Three, the third wish is that there hopefully there would be unified forms and a streamlined process in requesting for financial support and electrical medical records that can be accessible across hospitals to facilitate all these um, uh, requests for financial and other needs for the patient. Four is parent and caregiver empowerment programs. We also wish that there may be a halfway house for relatives and patients who are far away or based in, a far, in far away provinces to help them complete their treatments and they don't have to go back and forth and spend so much. Five is a survivorship and a patient navigation program, which I think the PGH is already working on. And finally, a wish list for the upcoming cancer center is to include a patient advocate or representative of a patient in the governance of the cancer institution. Because in the end, it's really important to listen to the patient. And as they have alluded earlier um, during the discussion, that it's important to allow time for this discussion because time spent education, educating patients is not wasted time. The more the patients and relatives understand their problem, the better will be the compliance of the patients to their treatment plan. And with that, I hope we learned a lot today. Um, thank you, Ma'am Susie and Doc Raymond. Um, good afternoon po sa inyo lahat. Thank you very much. That's uh, Dr. Dion Zagdalan. She's the uh, PGH training coordinator. Uh, thank you for the excellent, excellent summary. So Raymond, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Susie and Dr. Dion. Maraming maraming salamat. But before we conclude our program, thank, we'd like to thank the PGH Cancer Institute. So, Dr. Joey, maraming maraming salamat po. And also to Ms. Gurley Lorenzo, thank you so much. Uh, marami pong natutunan ang ating mga participants and very, very helpful po, especially on the items that we still need to work on and in particular po sa ating mga PPP. For next week, we will be having ito pong PGH Internal Medicine Division of Pulmonology. So abangan po natin ang ating pag uh, abangan po ninyo ang pag-uusapan po natin for next week. And what we are showing on the screen dito po sa Zoom is that at least 91% of our participants very very high uh, indicated that they strongly agree with all of the statements just a testament po <clears throat> dun po sa ating uh, esteemed speakers po and their talks and the topic at hand. So thank you, thank you again to our excellent uh, set of speakers for today. Before we conclude our program, all Stop COVID Deaths webinars are archived for viewing at the TVUP YouTube channel. So you just go to your browsers, type in www.youtube.com forward slash TVUPPH or if you have the YouTube app, <clears throat> you could just search for TVUP. 
uh, and you'll be able to see all 157 webinars uh, after day day it will be 158 na po <clears throat> and we also came up with what we lovingly call SED shorts <clears throat> it's a, as part of the YouTube shorts feature po no uh, these are very very short consumable videos showing po yung mga uh, mabilis pong maintindihan and nuggets of wisdom that we'll be able to learn for each of the webinars that we have had to date. So this formally closes our webinar for the week. Magkita-kita po tayo again next week from 12 noon to 2 p.m. It's a date. Together we can stop preventable deaths. So keep safe, keep healthy, and see you online.